Hello, my name is Dr. Vincent Anderson. You are now tuned in to the Library of Greatness at V3P. Today, we have an amazing guest by the name of Mary. She is a doctor of psychometry and she's also an entrepreneur. Please join me as we learn a little bit more about her. First of all, um, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, I am Dr. Mary Lee Nickerson. Okay. Dr. Mary Lee Nickerson, okay, and uh, tell me a little bit about your childhood, um, where you were raised, the culture. Yes, yeah. I was born and raised here in Phoenix, Arizona, so I've never lived anywhere else. Um, so it's really hard for me to say there's a culture here because Phoenix is like a sham board of everything, so there's kind of a really diverse set of people here, so you kind of get a little bit of everything. A little, kind of a little bit of everything? Yes. Okay, so I mean... What, what, what about like the, the educational culture? Like how, how was that out here whenever you were growing up? Very standard. Yeah. Um, the whole goal was just to do it, pass and get through. Yeah. Never really highlighted on if you get through what's set forth for you or what you have to look forward to let you attain these things to the best of your ability. So it was just a standard. This is what you do. This is what you're supposed to do. Get it done. That's it? Yeah. So, so what about uh, in your household? Was it stress? Was education stressed or? What was that like? Well, I'm the youngest of four, so okay. I kind of had like all the examples before me okay. to know what I wanted to do and what I should have done. Uh -huh. So I was always like the good kid, like the teacher's pet, got straight A's, things like that. So that's all I knew. So I just kept that going. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And in good old Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. So that was your... I guess yeah, your childhood. So in your childhood, did you work? Did you did you have? I got my job? first job at fifteen. So first when I was job a at freshman 15? in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, tell me about your first three jobs. Okay, so first, let's see. I've had so many jobs. Yeah. Right. <laughs> first, but first, I worked for a company called Premier Packing when I was a freshman in high school. So if anybody was moving to a different state, we would come in, like literally pack up their houses and boxes for them, and the moving company would come okay. and take their stuff. So that was my first job. It was like seven dollars. An hour. $7 yes. an hour, 15 yes. okay. <laughs> um, after that, I transitioned into like cashiering, doing, doing retail in the mall. I did the financial industry for a while. So I've really done almost everything. Um, for a while after that, I landed working for Lolo's Chicken and Waffles. I was there five years. Really? So I spent a lot of time there. Lolo's Chicken and Waffles? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what, what did you do there? I was a waitress. Waitress? Yes, yeah, so I waitressed there. I started off as a host, uh -huh. and then I got promoted as a waitress, and that's where I was for a long time. <laughs> oh, so did you, so I imagine you worked for, for tips primarily, huh? Yes. Yeah? Hard yeah. work? No. No? It's kind of me being a people person. That's always kind of been me. So I just kind of get the feel of people, and I ride their wave. So it was easy for me to get whatever tips I needed to kind of rub people the right way. Okay. So, yeah, I love that. Okay. That's why I was there so long, I think. <laughs> so you say premier packing. Yes. Did you say something at the mall? Yeah, so I worked in the mall at Sears as a cashier, and then I worked at Cinnabon for a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cinnabon? And, mm -hmm. yeah. and then I transitioned you know over. Uh, so good. <laughs> Bad for you. But then I transitioned over working for Lolo's, and I was there for a while until I went to college. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you went to college. Where did you go to college? Well, I've attended all the major universities in Arizona. So I did University of Arizona first, mm -hmm. then Arizona State, and then Grand Canyon University. Really? Yes. Wow. So you attended all of these universities. Yes. What was, what was uh, your undergraduate experience like? So I started off as a business major okay. at U of A. And after the first semester, I remember all my classes, they were so like male dominated. Okay. And they were huge, like four to 500 people in the class. We'd be checking in on a clicker. And me being more of like a personable learner, it was really hard to keep up. And they would talk a lot about how women don't really make it as CEOs and business and things like that. Super discouraging. Um, and me being like two hours from home, not having the means to really get back and forth, it was hard. So yeah. I ended up changing my major after the first semester. Really? Yes. Oh my gosh, what did you change it to? Just psychology. Oh, mm -hmm. psychology. Okay, mm -hmm. so change your major to psychology and then you finished out and that was at U of A? Yes. U of A, mm -hmm. okay. So I got, um, I did my bachelor's in psychology with a minor in child development. Okay. Then I got a master's in applied psychology at Arizona State, and then I did my doctorate in developmental psychology at Grand Canyon University. Hey, yeah. got a doctor in the house, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and so, your profession. Tell tell us about that. Tell me, um, what what do you do? What does that entail? What's your title? Let us know. 
I'm going to bring this full circle for you, okay? So, okay. <laughs> currently, right now, I am a full-time business owner. Um, I've always done makeup. That was kind of my side hustle when I was in college. I started doing that at U of A. I worked at the MAC at the mall. Okay. So, that's what I'm doing now. However, prior, when I graduated college, um, I started out at Phoenix Children's Hospital as an intern in their child life department. Okay. So, I interned for seven weeks, no pay, but that's when I was hustling at Lolo. So, it was fine to kind of, it was easy to make ends meet, rather. Right. Um, I got hired on as a child life assistant, mm -hmm. and I worked there until I attained my master's and I got promoted to a child life specialist. Okay. After I got my doctorate, I got promoted to a psychometrist. So, okay. we more so kind of do testing to see like where a kid is mentally. If we find that they may have any kind of developmental delays, we kind of see what they may need mm -hmm. based on testing scores to see what medication okay. or what therapy, anything like that to kind of get them through the steps of their mental disabilities. So what made you want to work with children? Because that's where I started. Yeah. Honestly, when I was trying to find a job, me landing that internship, it was what I needed to get my foot in the door. And for me to be hired on, I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. I right. didn't know any other fields I wanted to go into at the time. I just uh, knew when I was studying psychology, I loved it so much. It was easy for me to get through it. I yeah. powered through it. Yeah. So uh, when I got the job at the hospital with the kids, it was really hard because you see stuff, you know, yeah, you don't want to see. Exactly. So. And I did have to do clinical hours there, so I'd be working 12 to 18 hour days a lot of the time, three days a week. Yeah. So just I, that was where my love started. Yeah. So and to see a person so small and so vulnerable try to master their own mind yeah. into adulthood, it just kind of became something I wanted to latch to to figure out how can I get in there to help. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just have a sort of a passion yes. for working with kids? Yes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so it's a psychometrist, you say? Yes. Psychometrist. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like that. I like that. Yeah. And so with that being said, you know, um, you know, you had a, a, a start in, uh, you know, just childhood, you know, going through the education system. You worked a little bit. So you, you weren't born with a silver spoon? No. Whoa. No. <laughs> right. So oh, you had to overcome no. challenges, right? Big time. Um, of course, it was always planned for me to go to college because, I, again, I was always getting straight A's. I was, school was what I did. Right. So, but I knew, I never kind of let my mind even go so far as for where I wanted to go to school because I knew my mom couldn't afford it or would have been too much of a burden on my family for little old me, ah. you know, to want to go and do those things. So even still going to school here, that's why I had to work in between because there was nobody paying my tuition, right. you know, and financial aid and scholarships go so far. So exactly. I would always have one or two jobs and that's why I would be bouncing around with jobs a lot because after so long a job would kind of be conflicted with my work schedule. Exactly. That's fine. Right. I'll find another job because Bottom I gotta line. get this tuition paid. I gotta make sure I'm on my feet, whatever the case may be. So I love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Very inspiring. Thank you. So if you could please mm -hmm. for our young viewers could you please leave with them with a message, an encouraging message about education or any challenges that they may overcome? Yes. Um, I would tell the kids like I do now, um, the best part of life is having options. Right. You attaining your degree or any degree, there's about 20 jobs minimum, no matter what degree you have. Right. So for you to have those options to be able to make a way, there's no excuse for what you can or cannot do. Exactly. So in order to make it, you got to have, again, options at your hands. So, and those credentials you get, they can never be taken away from you. Exactly. Never, ever. So of course, there's going to be times where it gets, you know, weary, it gets hard. You want to give up because you feel like there's a ladder route to take. You could just probably hustle your way out. Right. Of course, and anybody can, but nothing good comes easy. Exactly. So it's all about, you know, really getting down in the dirt and grinding through it before you have a story to tell and it all makes it so much worth it in the end. Oh, man, that's awesome. I mean, I, I can agree with that. You know, it's it's you're going to uh, encounter some challenges. Yes. And then you're going to have whole to overcome time. It. Even when you get there, I feel like that's when the challenges really start to smack you in the face. You got that right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. What looks better doesn't mean it's easier. Bottom so, line. Yeah. Exactly. And so if you had to do it all over again, would you go through that same collegiate route that you took? 
yes, because I learned so much. Right. And you kind of get to a place where you really feel like I can do anything. There you because go. Because it's really nothing but you taking the time to do it. You taking the time to put your foot through the door. Exactly. So I would do it all the same. If any, if anything, I would probably do more exactly. if I could. Exactly. You know? Okay. I like that. Well, with that being said, thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, for Jerry. your time and uh, you're looking at the newest member of the Library of Greatness yes. for V3P. Thank you. Thank you.